So let's talk about accounting for overheads. So in this video, we're going to talk about allocation, apportionment and absorption of overheads. But before we get started, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. So the first thing we need to understand with overheads and costing in general is we have two different types of costs. One is a direct cost and another is an indirect cost. Now, direct costs might be the likes of direct materials, direct expenses and direct labour. And what we mean by that is, say for instance, if we're creating a product, then the labour costs that we've incurred to make that one product is direct labour. The materials used to make that product is direct materials and any expenses around making that product is direct expenses. So we can very easily identify what those costs are in relation to making that one unit. Indirect costs, on the other hand, are costs in production that are not easily traced because it's the likes of electricity or rent that we need in order to make various different products, but they're not attributable to one single product or product that we're creating. So examples of indirect costs are variable costs such as electricity, and they are called variable costs because they move month by month depending on usage. We might have fixed costs such as rent, and they're fixed in advance for a certain length of time so we know how much they're going to be and they don't change month by month. And then we have semi-variable costs. So for instance with a mobile phone you might have your contract and you pay a set amount per month for the contract but where you use any minutes above that amount you are charged an additional charge and that additional charge would be known as a variable element. The issue that we then face in accounting is how we then divide those indirect costs between cost centres or products that we're creating on a fair basis. And we do this in three steps. So what we do is known as allocation, apportionment and absorption. So if we look at step one, we can easily attribute those costs that are direct costs to the individual cost centre. And now we need to identify indirect costs that are going to be shared by more than one cost centre. So if they're attributable to just one cost centre, we're going to allocate those. So that's known again as cost allocation. But in order to split the indirect costs by the relevant cost centres, we then need to put into practice apportionment. So if we take this example of a floor space, if we look at finance, they have 25,000 square feet of an office. Marketing take up 10,000 square feet and sales take up 65,000 square feet. So overall, we have 100,000 square feet of floor in the office. Now, annual rent is £200,000. So we need to split that between finance, marketing and sales. So all we do is take the £200,000, divide that by the 100,000 square feet and then we would multiply that by however many square feet relates to finance, marketing or sales. So in the first instance, if we did £200,000 divided by 100,000 square feet times 25,000 square feet, that would give us a cost of £50,000 allocated to finance. If we did the same thing again for marketing, that gives us a cost cost of £20,000 and then for sales that gives us £130,000. So overall you can see there we have a total cost of £200,000. And as you can see here, this has been based on cost units, so this element is known as absorption costing. Now once we've completed these steps we can move on to cost apportionment, so the secondary stage of cost apportionment. So for those cost centres which don't have production units, we call those service departments. So they also require further apportionment of the costs included in that to the different production cost centres. Now a service cost centre might be the likes of HR who serve an entire company but their costs have to be spread across all the different production cost centres in a business. So if we have a look at another example here, what we have is a service department that has £45,000 of total overheads in a year. We have a production cost centre that has £71,000 and a second production cost centre that has £59,000. So after working out step one and two, we have those total overheads that are £175,000. However, we need to then split out this service cost centre and because we've only got two here, we're going to just divide that by two. So the £45,000 gets taken out of the service cost centre and put to the production cost centre and the second production cost centre. So we're going to add £22,500 to the £71,000 and £22,500 to the £59,000. So overall, 
all after doing this, the service cost centre is left with nothing in there, but production 1 cost centre has £93,500 in there, and production 2 cost centre has £81,500, and overall this makes £175,000. Now we can take this further still. So there's two different types of absorption costing. There is rate per unit and the alternative base of absorption. Rate per unit is fairly simple and it's just worked out with the total budgeted overhead cost divided by the number of units budgeted. And then the alternative basis of absorption. Instead of taking this very simplified approach in the rate per unit, we can use rate per direct labour hour, rate per machine hour, percentages of wage cost, percentages of material cost, or percentages of total direct cost, also known as prime cost. So let's have a look at an overhead under or over absorption example. So if we take the year end the 31st of March, what we have is a budget of total overhead cost of £120,000 and volume of hours of 20,000 labour hours. Now in April 19, the cost centre actually incurred £10,000 of overhead costs and 1,000 labour hours. So if we look at the predetermined overhead absorption rate or OAR, that would be to take the £120,000 divided by the 20,000 labour hours that we've budgeted for, which gives us £6. And then, if we look at what's actually happened, we've incurred £10,000 of cost in that overhead. And if we look at the overheads that we've absorbed, so the budgeted version of that, if we take that £6 and times that by the 1,000 labour hours, we were expecting costs of only £6,000, which means that we underabsorbed, we underbudgeted by £4,000. Let's have a look at the negatives of absorption costing. So historically, a direct labour rate for absorption of all fixed overheads was a very common method and this is because previously production was very labour intensive so you'd have your machine factory floor and that was just a typical setting. However nowadays with new technology a lot of this is mechanised so there's a lot more machine related costs, electricity to power up those machines, depreciation and maintenance of those machines. So let's have a look at activity based costing otherwise known as ABC. So ABC was originally designed to basically avoid the problems experienced by other costing methods such as absorption costing etc. So ABC costing looks at cost drivers and cost pools. Cost drivers are essentially the basis for charging costs in the ABC system, with a separate cost code established for each individual cost driver. Cost pools are basically where several costs are driven by the same activity, such as repairs, and those costs are basically pooled together and the total of the cost pool is absorbed by, say, labour hours or machine hours. So ABC is very similar to absorption costing in that the first thing that you need to do is to identify the costs. And then costs are effectively allocated to products by dividing the cost into costs by the number of costs that are driving those activities that are undertaken. So if we have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of ABC costing, what we know is that it provides a more accurate cost per unit, it provides a better insight into what causes the overhead cost in the first place, it recognises overhead costs are not all related to productions and sales volumes only, it can be applied to provide a more realistic cost where you've got a very complex business environment. This ABC method can also be applied to all overhead costs, so not just production overheads, and it can be used just as easily in service costing as it can in product costing. Some disadvantages is that it's impossible to allocate all overhead costs to specific activities. The choice of both activities and cost drivers might also be inappropriate and the benefits obtained from ABC might not justify the cost. It's also quite complex to explain to non-finance professionals. So I hope you found this video useful. Please hit the subscribe button for more accounting and finance tutorials, and I shall see you on the next video.